This is an SABC News presentation. Very good evening to you. A warm welcome to Asi Kuluma. Let's talk here on SABC One, broadcasting for you live from Echini this evening. We're in Grahamstown, and the reason why we're here is because the 11th Highway Africa Conference gets underway this evening uh, for the next three days. Uh, journalists as well as media practitioners thrash thrashing out some of the issues that are important in their field. Of course, you have about 500 delegates coming through from across the dealing with issues of professionalism within the media and as well as within the field of journalism. Of course, tonight, asking you the question whether or not the voices of the vulnerable in our society is heard in our media. from all across the continent discussing issues affecting their particular uh, field. Of course, uh, let me quickly introduce my guests uh, here on the program this evening, starting with Mary Papaya. Mary Papaya is the Secretary General of SANEF, as well as the Sowetan Durban Bureau Chief. A very good evening to you, Mary. Nice having you on the program. Thank you, and good evening. Thank you very much. Also here with me this evening, Liz Barrett, uh, Secretary General of the African Editors Forum, as well as Executive Editor of the Star Newspaper. Liz, a very good evening to you. Good evening. As well as a uh, familiar face here on Asikulum, Professor Faxon Banda, <laughs> SAP LTD UNESCO Chair of uh, Media and Democracy, School of Journalism and Media Studies. University. Professor Banda, good to have you on the show again. Good evening. Thanks indeed. Well, we'll also be taking your SMSs. I believe that we will indeed be in a position to take some of the SMSs. We will show you the number or give you the number in a minute. But of course, we start off the program by looking at uh, uh, this particular piece compiled by our reporter, uh, Ozan Elekwabe. What's in a young November? When you got 2004, who Professor Guy Baker was a new vessel in Rhodes, Washington Lela Utaba, or Labe Lucisa Pay, Wabe Pepandaba, a male in Guardian, Lapo Abe Econonda, Nabezindaba, Abanga Shitile in Guanele, Gazindaba Zubupa, as a Kungate Elabuli. Nala Pua Solagala is in Daba, as in 559, as a Pegele Ubupa. Uto Pagati wa mapepa ashitelelo nchugu zonke. Abe pepa ndaba in business day, yibona ababiga kakulu ngezi ndaba ezi patelene nibuba. Ugo shitelela guabu, dula ngishu na abe pepa ndaba iso weten. Watola gala uguti, abe stabona, ababigi ngugwa nele ngububa. Kanti umabona gute wote lolo SAPC 3, nao, wea zipegela izi ndaba izi nje, ube, wetula izi mbangzao, Ogui ETV. Ogu shagrisayo, haba mawai lente afana no kozi, kanyo no msobo wenene, no gui bona, paka tigo gunye, haba sungu lelo ugu pegela izindaba zobu pofu. Kepa, izindelo zabo, nazo azibigi ngu kwa nele, galo lutaba lubupa. Ugu kwa ningu lugwa peka, lua pindo la veza uguti, imi bigo ngubupa, Ilinga niselo kui ngayenye nisikamu, kepa aguko ugustanga niswa nemba ngela yako. Uhulumeni, abeze politiki, ama pizinisi, izi fundiswa, kanyi nizintanga nuzabakasi, balinga niselo kishwe guma pesa indanga mashuma isha kalulunye, abe ngalulutaba. U profesa ukaipeka, kanyi nabentanga no media monitoring project, Bati, zinga mapesa ndi anga mashuma aisi tupa kupela izindaba zobulili ugubigwa ngazo. Kanti umasipega nga sosta nga tui nileza base benzi. Imi pumele aga muvanje, eshi tulolo nga benta nga no East South African National Editors Forum, ISANEF, kanyi nechenda links, ibo nisa uguti. Abe sifazani abase benzela izindaba, banga mapesa ndi anga mashume amane na ntanu, Uma kukatani nisa na besilisa, abanga mashume ama sanu na ntano ama pesendi. Kule sisibalo abesifazani abamnyama, abasebenza ema kunjini abezindaba, banga ama pesendi alishumi ni shaka lumbili. Kukogonke loku, isibalo sabesifazani, sisa sasina nega kulu, kulaba abapete ezi kundeni, ezi pezulu, kanya na kwe minye imi kutu kupata. Tateli ezi kota ezi ndaba ezi balegile. Upenyo luabu, lupinde lubonise uguti. Abe zindaba besifazani, 
banga mapesenda nga mashume ama tatu haba sezi thalweni ezi pezulu kwa bezi ntangano eza thugene za bezi ndaba kanti hinga nye gupela ezi ntateli uma sipega gusibalo saka muvanje lulu kwa ningo lubonisa uguti haba sezi thalweni ezi pezulu zogu pata haba silisa banga mapesenda angu 70 kanti haba sifazane banga mapesenda angu 29 nogu isibalo esi ngane kakulu koza guabo kanti futi Aba se zinge ni logu pata ili ngapanzi kwa lelo. Abe si lisa, banga mapesend angu 69, kuti abe si fazane, babe nga mapesend angu 31. Gugunja lo futi, abe si fazane, aba se zinge ni logu pata, ili se zinge ni ili mapaka atibona. Kubona kala isibalo si ngonyoana nga mapesend angu 62, abe si lisa, kanti, aba ngu 39, abe si fazane. Kwa basi zinge ni ili pants, isi balo sibo na gala ngugu kula nga mapesenda angu 51 kwa besi lisa na angu 49 kwa besi fazane. Kungabe kungani kubona gala isi tombe isi njena, gonyaga ka 2007. It's going to take longer to have more of them up in the, in the senior positions that, that exist, simply because of historical background. And this is a challenge where you also find a lot of young women um, not really wanting to become managers, but prepare, prefer to be on the ground doing news themselves and not managing people. As the niggas are selling this in Africa, all who are many, but the boys are selling this in Momo, so Gulinganisa is the ballot, so Gulili, who are young, Wagozi ngomo, gonyaga ka 2015. Ogumanje, ayiko intlanga nyabe zindaba, eveza ngogusuwa bala izi nyatelo, kanyezi ngomo zayo, ezi ngapegela ukungalingane ngukobulili. Ami intlanga no isanef, but izi ntateli za besilisa, hizo one ezi nesibalo ezi pezu. Ube gubalo izi ntateli ezi biga ngeze politiki, abapenya izi ndaba, ababiga ngezo belelesi, kanye nababika ngeze midlalo. Kune sitingo esi kulu so gupegela lezi zinganamba. Gogu paula kwa labo besibalo esi ngane sa besifazane no kwenze gile uguba babe se zilalwe ni ezi pezu ngulu mkaka. We have been making so much uh, noise with no tangible um, document to say we have documented the fact that there are very few women at, at, at that level. We now know that there's a measly six of us in, in those levels. Um, but one of the important things is, is, is one need to understand that um, when we talk about journalism, we talk about journalism across the board, broadcasting, magazines, newspapers, uh, and, and we need to look at where the concentration is. When is Ibalo, is it total so go cooler? When is Ibalo, is it fazane, go makumbi, abezindaba? Eningzim, Afrika yungan, nala po se guze kwa begwa injongo, yogu linganizu ngu gobulili. Abezanef bati, uko aningo ngu wezintanga, kanyo nugu linganizu, kuzo gwenze ga matuze nje, kwa uonke ama kumbi, abezindaba. Kanti futi, bazi bo pezele ngu gupegela ama holo abo, Aba sebenzi bezindaba, njalo eminyageni, emitatu, kwea kwa mine, gemiza moi kukukula lemboni. It's a very demanding uh, position, uh, news as such. It, 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 it means being, you know, basically equipped, it means keeping up, it means uh, constantly being ahead uh, of the game in the media business. Uh, it means, uh, you, you know, reading, it means uh, broad knowledge, it means an upgrade in skills, it means keeping up with the demands of the day as well, whether it's editorial, uh, or any other uh, demands, uh, editorial, there are many commercial demands in the media as well. So I think one just needs to be aware um, and, and, and be confident uh, enough, you know, with those competencies to demand, uh, you know, top positions. Lolo kwa ningu ulo nziwe kwa zi kwa baga bili, nga bezi ntlanga no ezi pegele abe zindaba. Lubonisa uguti, genkati abe zindaba bezama uguvigela inkululego yabo kwa beze politigi. Kwa tinge ega futi uguba, ba pegele imboni yabo gentele ifanegi. Kungabe kwenza indo ene ngondo yi aba mapepa ndaba azinze ekoli ashitilele kakulu ngezi ndaba zobopa 
uma kukataniswa na bama pepa ndaba kanyini misagazo ezi nze kusifundazo sase mpumala nga koloni zanele kwa ben asikulu ume kandika so tata wako mbono kusitu wa njesi zikuti ngabe wena uti ni glori tabadwe tui sms 34065 that's our sms line this evening of course if you want to add and give us an input in as far as our question is concerned we're asking you whether or not the voices of the vulnerable in our society are heard in the mainstream media in this country mbuzo wede sikubuza wana kusitu la siti kona ngabe amazwi alabo ugui bwana bashuwe mpe mpagatini ngabe atu lagala na mtu njeni ya zindaba you can send us an sms 34065 also i'll take calls on uh, 011-714-8002 one one seven one four eight double zero two mary let me start with you I, I just maybe starting from from where we are at the moment there seems to be this issue where people are trying to analyze the represented gender newsroom is there a link between gender representation in the newsroom and the coverage of stories such as stories of poverty and of course um just generally in our society i think there is a minimal link clearly there's no scientific um data to say that that exists but when you speak to newsrooms where there are women in decision-making positions, what we're finding is that there's a search for different types of stories. There's, there's a need to go beyond just statistics. Mm. There's the push and the pursuit for giving stories a human face. Mm. And, and there's a sense that women use that kind of approach to stories. Mm. There's also the argument that not many women use it or, or others in decision-making positions may not use it. But clearly there's that sense that comes through. On the other hand, there's also the, the, the clear perspective in mind that you may have more women in newsrooms, but unless you have an enabling environment that gives these women decision-makers a voice to take decisions, mm -hmm then no, you're not going to have the kinds of new stories that we really want to have. So it's quite a complex issue, and it needs to be looked at in its entire Let, let me bring you in, Professor. Do you agree that, that uh, naturally women in the newsrooms would give a different dimension and perhaps a different analysis of poverty uh, as, as men would? I think they would, actually, um, because uh, we, we do know uh, from research that women um, affected by poverty uh, in more ways than men, um, and that their take on it uh, is informed by that experience. Uh, but we also know, as, as Mary has said, that uh, the structures within which women work constrain them from bringing uh, to fruition that particularized experience. So that in the end, what we end up with um, are definitions of poverty using male-dominated standards mm. so we have a situation in which structures are such that they constrain the individuality of mm. uh, of women uh, i would argue that um, if we created an enabling environment indeed uh, allowed uh, women to define poverty from their perspective to pursue stories from their perspective would have a lot more stories uh, about about poverty mm. simply because this is a discursive issue it concerns them much more than it concerns men and Liz don't take this personal but here you are executive uh, editor of the star and research that's been conducted by the media monitoring project has proved that the star is is is, is, is its coverage of poverty related issues is list covering those stories I, I must say that there, there is a big difference in my mind and <coughs> and that between covering stories of poor people mm. and covering poverty stories okay. and that the star is very good at personalizing stories therefore the voices of poor people as opposed to just ministerial official journalism often get covered in the star I would but, they're, but they're not yeah. they're not given a poverty context Hmm. which makes them kind of not being be uh, analyzed it's quite interesting as, because as a poverty then the, the story. question becomes which one is important to give poor people a voice or to mm. cover poverty stories well i would disagree actually mm. with this approach that women would cover more poverty stories i think it depends on the on the strategy of the media mm. and if if the strategy is to um, personalized stories show show people not just as victims but also as people who can you know succeed in life mm. in in wh wherever they are and whether they're male or female rich or poor then and if you have this approach of personalizing stories then I think you're going to get a lot more individual voices mm. into that media I'm gonna ask Mary to respond but prof I want to go back now scientifically what do we know about how the media in South Africa covers stories of poverty well uh I conducted a, um, 
a critical discourse analysis. I hesitate to use that uh, the bombastic term, but basically, I was attempting to understand how the media represent uh, development in South Africa, and poverty is an integral part of development. What I discovered um, when I looked at uh, uh, the, uh, the, the, the Herald Online and the, the Dispatch Online is, is, is interesting. First of all, uh, none of the two newspapers seem to foreground development as an issue. The word development doesn't occur frequently in the reportage. Um, but there are references to poverty, uh, particularly in the, in, in, in the Daily Dispatch. It actually foregrounds uh, poverty. But it is interesting how it does that. Um, uh, first of all, it's to uh, disembody poverty, to remove the bodies mm -hmm. from poverty. In other words, to look at it in clinical terms. For example, in talking about housing, they will make reference to RDP houses mm. uh, and not confront the question of poverty head on and look at the squalor in which people live. Mm. Uh, so there is a sense in which the discourse at the national level, which is pervaded by politicians, gets repeated mm. in the way the media look at poverty. But another thing that I noticed was that uh, uh, the, the, the Daily Dispatch seems um, to to use the voices of others to talk about how the poor are affected in South Africa. And I characterize that as the, the vicarious liability of the wealthy. Mm. More often, it, will, it, might be, it might be the wealthy that speak about how they are going to get people out of the poverty doldrums. In some cases, it might even be about uh, white elites mm. who look at the policies of the ANC as having failed and that they must offer an alternative. Mm. So I see that as vicariously placing yourself in the, uh, in, the, in the shoes of the poor and articulating their concerns. Another thing which came out uh, was what I refer to as the Bantustanization of poverty. That in fact, if you look at content uh, in, the, in the Daily Dispatch, it courts people that would like to treat uh, poverty as something that must be balkanized, that must be locked away somewhere. Mm. And so when they talk about uh, housing development, for example, they will say that you shouldn't build low-cost houses next to mansions because the owners you know, of those mansions will and the economy might collapse. Mm. So in a sense, uh, you could say that, that this repeats the strategy mm. of separate development. It's very interesting, and you're making a number of very valid points. But again, Mary, maybe I should bring you in, because ultimately we need to understand what is poverty. And the media, such as the media that you've quoted, is going to argue and say, but we, we talk about the manifestations of poverty. We talk about lack of housing delivery. We talk about um, poor health uh, provision, and, and, and therefore, we do talk about uh, poverty. I, I think the, the question is, when we, how do we define poverty in the media? Mm. Is poverty about lack of income? Is it about lack of access mm. to, um, to, to, to financial institutions? Is it about lack of access to opportunities, mm. to decision making? We live in a country where the Constitution says that every person has a voice. Mm. But clearly, there are certain fundamentals that de define what constitutes a poor person. Mm. And if we look at the South African context, we clearly are looking at the poor and the marginalized. Mm. And, these, and, the, the, and, and if you, you look further at the stories, you see that they're women and children. Mm. So if we're looking at that as being poverty, and those are being the individuals mm. at the face, cold face of poverty, then yes, media should be looking at presenting those stories in that context. Mm. I agree with the professor that it's very easy to, prevent, to present stories from a statistical perspective, putting numbers to stories. Uh, there's also a tendency to have official voices, mm. government perspectives and government reports on poverty. There's also the tendency of representing the voices of the poor by, like he said, mm. elite groups. Mm. And I think that happens purely because media works under deadline. We have daily pressures, deadline-driven assignments, 
there's not enough um, debate on this agenda for mm. poverty reporting mm. or reporting of ordinary voices. And yes, Liz is right that there needs to be an overall strategy so that journalists can get the story right. We'll take a commercial break, but of course uh, we will welcome your input on this very important discussion. The number to, to dial, uh, remember, is 011 714 uh, You can also send us an SMS at 34065. Effectively wanting to know from you this evening whether or not the voices of the marginalized in our society is heard in our media. Of course, lots of, uh, of issues that have uh, been raised, uh, and when we come back, we'll certainly be looking at some of those issues. We'll be asking, for instance, whether or not you, the public, have the appetite for some of the bad stories that could be coming through in the media. There's also issues of commercial interests. Uh, so what are your thoughts in relation to those issues? Across this land we have begun, we strive and work as one. We build the city with all our might, from the dawn into the night. See us seven times, see us seven times. In our hands the future lies, we'll raise this dream into the sky. Refreshment at the end of the day. At Christ and Christ, we're proud to say that you come first. It's our warehouse clearance sale and everything must go. Like it's Tubby's a wall unit for only 2999. And get a Nokia cell phone free when you buy for 2999 or more. We'll treat you like our only customer. Christ and Christ. Tiny hands and tiny feet. <laughs> Whatever your baby needs. The kind of smile that makes your heart skip a beat. The sweetest vests and leggings at only $9.99. Well, that's your baby. That baby so sweet. The softest toweling sleep suits at just $19.99. Everybody knows. Jet knows baby's bad. Jet. Oh, good for yeah. life. Let's talk with SABC One. Sagazango is a key in the 11th Highway Africa Conference. La Kuruma Konanga and Dabe Tindin Tateli Ganyi. Now, Bom Sagazun Jengentela. Aba Tinta Ngayo. No matter the big Ngayo. Is in Togo Kuruma Zes Tinta Bombo Fuguleli. Let's go to the lines. We have a caller from KZN. Good evening. 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 very important point and maybe I should bring you in Liz because he's talking about the proliferation or the availability of media in people's languages indigenous languages mm -hmm. that that on its own is a problem because mm -hmm. I'm and other than KwaZulu Natal, I think KwaZulu Natal would have two um, such newspapers, but elsewhere in the country there aren't. It, um, I think KwaZulu Natal is a very uh, important case because it has shown that um, 
newspapers in other languages can sell mm. and obviously they need to sell to become businesses mm. but um, nobody seems to have the courage to try it in any other language yet mm. which which is interesting in and maybe prof because in the eastern cape in particular it it would generally look pretty feasible to do something like that where where you'd have majority of people speaking as a closer why is it not possible well, I, I can't answer for, for uh, entrepreneurs, um, but quite clearly uh, media owners are interested in the bottom line, and uh, that's money. If there is a sufficiently big market, they might invest in it, uh, because uh, this, this is not just about about charity you know mm. we can identify the problem of. but, but of then the very important point then becomes mm. how important is that bottom line in determining who gets to say what in our media it's absolutely important is it possible that the reason why we don't hear the the, the, the poor the marginalized in our society is because of that well look the powerful and and however we define them politically economically mm. uh, symbolically whatever uh, have access um, to mainstream media whereas the poor um, have limited access to it uh, we need to take into account the question of power, that mm. power does determine the extent um, um, to which we will access mm. uh, media. Um, and and I, wouldn't, I wouldn't underestimate it. Um, mm. uh, and we, we all know that... You know, Mary, would it be totally a bad thing? Because I'm thinking here, the access by the powerful may very well give us solutions. You see, the, the, the one thing is that, and I was talking about appetite earlier, is that we don't want to hear over and again people complaining, but people offering solutions. And if we assume that the powerful may offer solutions, is it a bad thing that they have access to the media? I don't necessarily think that that is a bad thing because if you look at the landscape of media, mm. you talk in different markets, mm. you talk in different languages. Mm. Let's take, for example, KwaZulu Natal. So, over the landscape of media, you're getting totally different um, stories being told in different medias. Mm. So, you're having a mix. And I think that's the richness of diversity that we talk about. Mm. And that's what media does best, mm. giving different voices, projecting different stories and different treatments. Of For example, let's say there is a story in KwaZulu-Natal. Mm. No one paper or media or radio station is going to cover the story in the same way. Mm. So I think that richness of diversity is good and the richness and the diversity of different audiences is even better. Mm. I think the, the thing for journalists is to always understand who you're writing for and what is the objective of writing the story. Mm. So if we're writing a story on poverty, mm. then clearly if you're in a market that is, uh, like Prof said, a rich LSM mm. or a higher powerful income group, your story is going to be structured differently. Mm. Mm. And similarly, if you're writing for a different publication that's for a lower income listener or, mm. or a lower income reader, the story is structured differently. However, the challenge is for media to always tell the story in its entirety. We should not be in a position where we stereotype, mm. but getting the message across is important. Mm. And, and why are we running the story? Are we running poverty stories because we want to hold people in government, uh, leaders, um, hold leaders in government accountable? Are we running it because we want rich people to contribute to solutions? Mm. Or are we running it because it's happening and it's real mm. and we want something to be done? It's interesting, uh, because looking at the newspapers then that, uh, that you surveyed or uh, uh, investigated there, uh, Professor, uh, to what extent were they uh, bending over backwards, if you will, uh, to please their readers, to ensure that, uh, because you, they have a market, they have to make sure that it's relevant to their readers. I, I didn't go that far, you know. I, I don't think that they were bending, uh, you know, backwards at all. Uh, I, I think that uh, they, they were covering, you know, what they thought were newsworthy stories, uh, and, and that was indicative of the structural biases um, that are there. Uh, for example, the, you know, the the, the Herald Online, you know was more interested in economic growth. Uh, it was actually more interested in numbers mm. um, as opposed to, to, to poverty as such. Um, and, 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 and it would do three things, mm. you know, to, to substantiate its, its argument about how important economic growth was mm. uh, in, in poverty alleviation, although that word didn't appear. It, it, would, it would give uh, voice um, um, to those that would churn out statistics about how well the South African economy was growing. Mm. Um, it would give voice to those who were placed in institutions. In other words, saying to people that it is 
institutional validity mm. that matters where issues of development of, of the economy are concerned. Mm. An academic says something that counts. Mm. Okay. Uh, a politician says something that counts. But another thing that they were doing was to try to give this representation of poverty some policy validity. Mm. Okay, we have a caller from Limpopo. Good evening. Hello? Yeah, yeah hi, welcome. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, loud and clear, yes, go yes. ahead. Okay, I'm, I'm calling from the Northwest. What I want to say is that yeah. my name is Pat. I'm calling from Freiburg. Mm. What I want to mention is that the mm. people who are talking on behalf of the media in your studio there do not know that in the mm. Eastern Cape there is a Vuyani Machechana who is an independent publisher in Isitosa. In the Northwest there are independent publishers, people who are not connected to the mainstream media, who are already involved as part of the independent publishers, African indigenous language mm. practitioners, who are involved in producing newspapers. Another example is that of Sol Blakey, who died a very poor man, although he's dead. So even in the present, there are people who are in his footsteps. So it is not just KwaZulu Natal, there are practitioners of journalists who are already involved in making a contribution to uh, through indigenous media using community media, and those people are not represented. Yeah, but Pat, Pat, before you go, let me ask you something, Pat. I hope you're there and you're, you're, you're hearing me. Because the, the issue then becomes whether or not do you think the independent publishers have a certain impact on the coverage and accommodation of those who would be marginalized in our society? Do they make a, a certain impact in your view? Well, they are. I mean, from the point of view of the government of the Northwest, I know that tomorrow uh, those independent publishers will be part of uh, the debating how the, the image of the province is going to be presented. So they do participate mm. uh, in, in, in the thinking of how they communicate government message. And I know that uh, mm. they are in touch with communities. They know how development is happening and they are trying to do something to change public opinion, even okay. from that level of society. Okay, Pat and Freiburg, thank you very much. Liz, I would like He's brought up a very good point because we were sitting here talking <coughs> as if there wasn't community media, mm. you know, and we're sitting here talking at Highway Africa as if there isn't the internet and the blogosphere and all those kind of things mm. where um, people on a, on a smaller level, business wise, are making an impact. And mm. community newspapers are particularly important mm. in terms of, of the rural areas. And you can talk about urban poverty, which we might cover in the Star, mm. but the rural areas are not covered enough unless the community newspapers are but doing it. The question, it. Liz, is because. Comment on that. Yes, please, please. Uh, well, well, first of all, uh, we, we do know that there are alternative spaces there. You know, we, we, we're not neglecting community media, but, but we also know that uh, community media uh, are bedeviled by lots of problems, mm. not least uh, to do with sustainability, mm. uh, not least to do with the content that they, that they themselves generate. Mm. <laughs> In fact, it would appear um, from studies of community broadcasting that uh, 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 some of the community radio stations uh, churn out music more than serious programming that is focused on poverty, mm. that in a sense they become alienated from the communities mm. which they are meant to be saving. Mm. Mm. Indeed, that can be extended to the um, independent public. Because, Mary, what, what, sorry, sorry, Prof, what I was going to ask is, is whether or not, because we may run into a problem where we overrate their impact, do they have any impact at all in our discourse, national discourse? Community media, yes. absolutely. I think fundamentally if we look at those issues that mainstream can't get to, those lost issues, talking about issues that are critical at, at the coalface of our societies. Mm -hmm. We're finding increasingly that community media, whether it's radio or whether it's uh, newspapers, are covering issues that mainstream media can't get to. Mm -hmm. They're having a different kind of engagement, but absolutely right, the professor's right, that they are critical issues in terms of their content, the way they're managed, and so on and so forth. I would not um, exclude them from this whole dynamic of covering. You want to say something? You know, I think they're, they're, you know, we're, we're almost separating the two too much, mm. you know, that it is absolutely true that if stories covered in community papers attract the attention of the mainstream media, they will start to cover those stories. Mm. And it often happens. And, and even more, people will start out in journalism in community papers, yes. and then they will come to the bigger papers. Mm. So, I mean, there is, the, it, there is a very strong interconnection. And things through the African Eye News Service, I mean, we get stories from Limpopo and Northwest and things that we will carry in, in Joburg papers, mm. you know.
Mm -hmm. would like to hear from you some more. 0117148002. Send me an SMS as well. We'll be reflecting on some of the SMSs. Lots of them coming through. Uh, we'll take a quick commercial break. We'll be back in a few. if you only had to clean half the dirt. Candy Andy Cream has maximum cleaning power, meaning up to half the scrubbing is needed to remove tough stains. Its millions of microparticles are specially designed to penetrate and carefully lift stains away with less scrubbing. So that tough cleaning requires less effort. Handy Andy Cream, up to 50% less scrubbing. Relaxes that dry my hair out? That's played out. Turn up the moisture. Dark and Lovely Moisturize and Relaxer. Dark and Lovely seals moisture into every strand every time you relax. Straighter, softer, believe it. No frying, no drying. Silky straight and silky soft. My relaxer does it all. Dark and lovely. Only from Soft Sheen Carson. My style, my way. Use Dark and Lovely Oil Moisturizers daily for protected, nourished, and shiny hair. Good evening to you. Sure. Hi. Hey, welcome. Hi. Yes. Hi, um, it's Wulisani from Jamestown. What I wanted yeah. to say, Polani, is um, the media in South Africa have got a tendency that the, the development issues are never headlined. So therefore, I suggest that we have the media that is specifically focused on development issues. Because if you can look page a newspaper today, you never find a developmental story on the front page. They are always in between somewhere there. And development issues are not being reflected as development issues. They are being reflected as some selling political ideology that is there to just sell uh, a vote or to sell some kind of advocacy that we that mm. uh, and in the end development doesn't mm. happen because we are more of selling okay. our political oh, parties uh, sorry so can i ask you to hold the line don't put the phone down Hang on. hello Hi. don't put the phone down i'm going to ask my guest to respond to you and see if you're satisfied with that response maybe mary can you respond I mean, I think it's important for, under, for us to understand what we mean by developmental issues. If developmental means delivery of services, mm -hmm. uh, developing communities, making communities um, have access to decision making, uh, job creation, mm -hmm. so on and so forth, then I think those stories are being done. Perhaps they're not being done at the level that we would like get to be seen mm. but i think there is an effort being made mm. maybe the challenge is for us to do a lot more of it mm. and and that is where we say go beyond the and 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 the official voices and look for the stories at community level uh, hi i hope you're still there because yeah. i, I want to know what your definition of a developmental story is how, how would you define how do you see a developmental story i, w I would say is development is um it comes from within it's from the people who are underdeveloped, and it's, it's obviously funded by people who are more developed, but they need to, to develop as well intellectually in terms of understanding 
what are those people needing because development is not only statistical like you put it development is intellectual development is in, is is, is, is uh, emotional therefore we need people who go straight to the bottom heart and understand what exists instead of people who would define development in terms of people living in squatters have they ever been there uh, did they walk and see how how dirty it is they have never been there only if they do it, they do it with the security guards around them. Would hmm. that okay. those people have an Thank understanding? Thank you very much. Much appreciated. I appreciate that, Liz. I, I agree with Mary, a lot of development stories are being done and newspapers in particular will have supplements or have a series or whatever around, around development. But it, um, those are not the stories that go on the front page. Why? Because unless it's a, it's something that is happening, you know, if it's a long-term thing that's being reflected on with statistics and things, it's not going to sell a newspaper, you know, and maybe he will buy it, but everybody else is not going to do it. Interesting. Because, it, because, <laughs> because it, is not, it is not front of mind in people's, you know, mm. I mean, I don't like us having, carrying celebrity stories, but there is a demand from the public to have them. And... As far as I'm concerned, we have as few of them as, as we, as we mm. need to have. But there, there are things happening on a day-to-day -day basis for a day -to daily newspaper needs to be on the front page. Uh, but there are those stories inside. They are being carried, particularly in the business sections or you know, things like the Sunday Independent, where there is in-depth journalism mm. happening on that. Well, and you're I, agreeing with you know, my caller. Well, I mean, to all intents and purposes, yes, I, I agree with him. Mm. <laughs> um, uh, development as a concept. It's not featured, uh, you know, in, 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 in media content, uh, you know. You, you can look through, you will not find development featured as such. If you find it at all, it is associated with uh, the development of, 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 of roads, for example. Mm. Uh, and so more often than, than not, they'll talk about it in terms of infrastructure, mm. um, uh, sort of structural enablement and mm. so on and so forth. But they don't talk about it as, as a political idea which is all inclusive it focuses on gender inequalities and how those can be addressed it focuses on questions of democracy and how those can be addressed indeed it uh, focuses on questions of poverty itself mm. and how it can be addressed mm. it also looks at the history within which these discussions are unfolding not least the apartheid past and the legacy that uh, it has bequeathed to us so development is much more than just economic growth. Mm. It touches on a range of issues. In that sense, it is a multifaceted project mm. which is more participatory in nature. It enables the most ordinary of people to own whatever it is that we refer to as development. Mm. And that's the idea that he seems to be, to be trying to resurrect. I, I disagree. I think a lot of... Um a lot of individual stories, a lot of entrepreneurship stories, a lot of success stories, a lot of, you know, people telling, you know, how they got from, from one situation to another. I think all of our newspapers are carrying quite a lot of those. Mm. And even if they come out through, you know, uh, award ceremonies where, where people have celebrated or whatever, people are being profiled and they're being carried. But I, I wonder if the kind of thing that you're talking about isn't being carried in academic journals instead. No, not at all. It's <laughs> <You know>? <laughs> well, is, then why are you not writing it, about it more it, it might in be, a way that can go on the front page? It, it might, be, it might be couched in academic jargon, but mm. it talks about everyday issues. Mm. And those are not really covered, which mm. is why my emphasis is on the multidimensionality mm. of development. So it's interesting us, now you're talking about the academic mm. jargon, because I was going to ask about the skill, whether we have have um, enough skill within the within the fraternity to interpret the figures that we were talking about. Now look, mm. this is what she has been making reference to. She's no. been saying we should humanize no. into, into all intents but, and purposes but, these stories. <clears throat> and it is possible to analyze the faces, the bodies behind the statistics. Mm. For example, you might have a politician there talking about macroeconomic fundamentals. Yeah. Who cares about that? In the final analysis, it's about microeconomics mm. focusing on such issues as shelter, mm. food, mm clothing and so on and so forth those are the issues that matter to people now it doesn't matter where you are these are of concern to you and the newspapers mm -hmm. or indeed mary will, will, mary will comment that on, on that issue in a moment i need to take another caller hi there i'm john Bolan. hello john, buddy. yes hi mm. 
ngoku soma umduli inesina ukuthi uyibeke la qolani ayilento le amanye uzipapers amanye ama ente nga uthi balilekile ukuthi ibeke amanye uzipapers njengawe bosa aku private companies and mama ngabe sizobheka ukuthatha kwawo like iyindlendlo lena ezwe babeka ikhona la ethatha i ama isha development ya wasa kufranchise effect it is speculation is over poor that's the effect you can run from okay ibuyela ngakube i government yethu njengamanje iye ukukhishwa kakhulu usiwa kufranchise stories abantu abantu we can't let it image it cut and give me a take in it with with it no ma it cut as ilendole iloku i reality it is why media yes ama nyama issues nova ama alo imedia gaga de akali manje from the upper tech era they cut was then into a enemy government if you keep a gafuli stories of wonder about it might happen with the government that has a as it read the end of the and or as the mood of a person is doing his negative the second way is the time that I move up I'm not a position a cool man is the danger I'm going to as near the end of the crisis the mass cool man and media is focusing while you band about poor okay all right very interesting points okay thank you very much for your call caller from johannesburg very interesting points now i'm just briefly going to translate what he's saying mary perhaps you can uh, respond as well as liz because he's quoting the star and says that uh, of course the first point is the point that you've already made about circulation that you get a developmental story on the front page circulation will suffer but also the second point that he's making is that perhaps newspapers like the star are under pressure from government to portray that which is positive about the country um and therefore not wanting to put poor people on the front pages and and make the country seem as if nothing is being done in order to address those particular issues do you ever find yourself under pressure perhaps to ensure that what we see sunshine journalism as it were you know it's it's such an interesting debate because what we get is we get our readers calling in and saying stop giving us so much crime hmm. it's not the government that's saying that it's hmm. it's readers who are saying we can't look at this stuff and eat our cornflakes at the same time hmm. and we're saying but this is the reality we will not give you bodies on the front page but hmm. you know it there are horrible things happening out there 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 is I mean, there was a period at the Star where we said um, we've got to try and carry more positive stories mm. on the front page, whatever. And every now and again, we say that to ourselves again. But there, you know, it's it's just a very difficult balance to get, mm. and it tends to be that the that those positive stories go inside. Mm. Mary, do you want to comment on that? I think the issue of relevance is what we're talking about. Mm. I don't necessarily think that stories will not be run because and if I look at the Sowetan mm. which I work for mm. I mean our editor makes it very clear that we want stories that portray human beings that has a human interest aspect to it so please tell it like it is mm. so there is an effort being made in that s a scenario what we need to understand is that yes you may have a, a, a largely gripping story on the front page but then as you go through the paper, there comes the other stories. Mm. And that's the issue of balance. Mm. It's about the editorial plan that you have for every day. And I'm sorry, yes. can I interrupt? Yes. Because uh, very often the plan for the stories that are inside is a much bigger plan. Much more money and effort and time for the stories that are inside. Mm. The, much more effort is made to, to... But people think that because it's on the front page, it's more important. Yeah. It's not... I think you know, the front the, page is the latest. Oh yeah, yes. but, but Professor, a little earlier, asked the question, and we don't have a lot of time. I would just like you to be very brief in answering it about, for instance, why do we have two definitions of unemployment in South Africa? Is it because we're running away from um, portraying and saying what government wouldn't like us to say? Why do we not say that um, in terms of the South African statistics, 42% of the people are unemployed using the expanded definition? I think in part it's because of how complex uh, unemployment is. Mm -hmm. There are people uh, who may not be formally uh, employed, but are nevertheless employed, mm -hmm. particularly in the, the informal sector. I mean, we hear of the first economy and, and the second economy. You, so you need to recognize mm -hmm. the fact that employment takes on different colorings, mm -hmm. uh, that there are people who are gainfully employed on their own. Mm -hmm. And in the final analysis, development is about people mm. uh, to be employed on their own. Mm. So you need to recognize that. Um, whether you can reflect it in statistics is a different matter because those, those, those 
the sort of types of, 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 of jobs may not be captured by national statistics. And as such, mm. you need to be very careful how you approach the issue. Okay, all right. Uh, unfortunately, we are just uh, running out of time. Just in, in wrapping up, uh, Mary, would you say there is something perhaps that we should do in the media to ensure that those people who are marginalized in our society are more reflected and well reflected perhaps? I think there needs to be a lot of work done mm. to make sure that those voices are heard poverty is not just about lack of access to health um, education it's also about hiv aids it's unemployment and all of those issues so the issue of poverty reporting is critical to to where society is and media has to make sure that it tells those stories Liz, is, it, is, it, is it possible to to balance uh, the issue of reflecting those that are vulnerable and of course chasing the bottom line I, I think absolutely. One of the things that you said earlier is that we, we might use officials to comment on stories because they can prevent sol present solutions. Mm. The, pro the, the issue then is who's presenting the problem? Who's defining the problem? Mm. And unless we get the people who are vulnerable into their voices into the newspapers, then the, the rich people are defining the problem and they're presenting the solution. And that doesn't make sense to me at all. I would like to agree with her very, very strongly that the problem more often is that the, 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 the framing of poverty or vulnerability is done by the elite mm. and the framing of solutions by them as well. So you need to involve a lot more of the poor. Okay, I need to take a quick commercial break now. When I come back, uh, we're going to be wrapping up on this particular one. But also, we'll be telling you that uh, conversations such as this will be continuing. We'll tell you what the platforms will be. Uh, you with us. Good minutes talk here on SABC One. solution. Sanlam, we're thinking ahead. Are you? In that the Jewish community benefited from apartheid, the apology must be given to this commission. Why would he apologize? They didn't want well, they did he do bad thing? I think anybody who had a white skin in this country had plenty to say sorry about. Jews have had a special responsibility to be more sensitive, to be more anti-racist than anybody else. But I can't help feeling it uh, in, in my heart. Tonight on One More Eight, catch Hugh Jackman, John Travolta, No Halle Berry in Swordfish. And at 10, Jean-Claude Van Damme leaps into action in Kickboxer 2. SABC 1. For sure. This weekend, let me quickly thank my guests who came through in our studios this evening. Uh, let's thank. Uh, uh huh. That's uh, Sukuluma for this week. Quickly, let's thank our guests for coming through. Mary Papaya, thank you very much for your time. You. Let's also thank Liz Barrett, okay. as well as Professor Faxon Banda. Thank you very much for watching our program. The conversations continue on SAFM tomorrow. Don't miss these particular topics where we'll be talking about exactly the same issues. We're playing out with Marimba Band. You have a fantastic week ahead. Cheers. Mm -hmm.